Today's session of Echo Voices is with Amanda Mason from Smartbox, and she's going to be telling us about Supercore and VocoChat. So I am going to get rid of those slides. And Amanda, take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Let's see if I can get sharing here. Okay, so hopefully you can all see my slides now. Um, so I'm Amanda Mason. Um, I am currently a product specialist with Smartbox. Um, I um, just, you know, just a little bit about me. I am an SLP, of course. I'm also an ATP. Um, and before this job, I worked at the ALS Association here in Oregon um, for uh, like about five years, I think. And then I've been here with Smartbox for two and a half years, I think now, maybe almost three. It seems like um, crazy how time flies. Um, but I'm excited to be here today and show you some of our tools and a little bit more of an in-depth tour. Um, probably some of you saw the kind of overview of grid I did, uh, was it last fall, I think. Um, and I know that's in the archives of the Echo Voices as well. So let's see it today. Oops, go ahead. There you go. Um, oh, first a little bit, just so you kind of know who is who we are. So I'm Amanda, of course, I work for Smartbox. Um, I'm kind of pulling that out because there recently was a change this past summer. We um, merged and are now sister companies with Talk to Me Technologies, another speech generating device company. Um, so you'll kind of start to see us working together in different ways. We're kind of still figuring out all the little strands of how that works out. Um, but just so you kind of know. Um, but as a company, we make our own software, which we'll talk a lot about today, of course. Uh, we make our own hardware, so our own devices and everything, and then one of our own eye gaze cameras as well. Um, I think this is starting to change a little, but um, it still feels, I feel like, pretty new sometimes here, Smartbox in general. Um, but we actually started about, gosh, it's probably closer to 25 years um, ago now in the UK. Um, and we've got partners and devices and services and like 43 countries now. Um, so just so you kind of know, we're not like, we're not super brand new or anything like that. So we make speech generating devices, make software. Um, where are we coming from when we do that, right? We of course want our solutions to facilitate independence, interaction, and participation. And we have a lot of different options and different things to talk about that address all of those. Um, like we said, I'm gonna focus on two of those today, but just to give you kind of that overview. Um, when we talk about our software specifically, Grid3, um, you probably you might have heard of it before, but we kind of talk about these seven different areas. Um, you can see them on this slide pulled out, but we've got options that address um, users who may, might need text communication support, symbol communication, computer and environmental control pieces. We've got accessible apps, you know, YouTube, TikTok, TikTok, all like all the cool ones. <laughs> And the maybe not so cool ones. Um, and then some interactive learning, education, and reading pieces and things like that, too. Um, so what, today we're going to focus on some of our symbol grid sets, but we've got a lot of different choices that can kind of be built together as well. Um, I do want to pull this out for you all as well, um, that we have grid three, which is kind of our Pioneer software, and that's our Windows-based software. Um, then we also have Grid for iPad, and they're very much almost the same, except that iPad has some specifics that, you know, we can't have quite all the same features um, between the two, so there's just a little comparison list here. You can find this also on our website, and we have a hub for some extra support and communication that I've got on a resource slide at the end for you that I'll share, but just to give you kind of an idea. Um, and Amanda, here. Um, you, of yeah. course, did a grid session for us at the beginning of the year. Yes. This information is available in the master matrix. Yes. Thank I you. Will yes. I filled that out. <laughs> yes. Thank you. That matrix was fun to fill out. I was like, oh, yeah. What else can we do? <laughs> this was a lot of good info in there. <laughs> um, okay. So jumping into that was kind of just to kind of put us all in the same place. But jumping into Grid, the software that we make. Um, this is a page that we call Grid Explorer. And I'll take this on a live 
tour in a little bit, but just to kind of give you an idea. Um, it's where we as clinicians or caregivers kind of live. And then typically the user will choose one of these squares, what we call grid sets um, as their homepage. So they don't necessarily need to work in here. Some people like to, that's obviously up to the user and the person and their SLP and everyone. Um, but there's all this background support and you never have to choose just one grid set. We've got so many different options. You can build things together. You can add keyboards from one grid set into another, all that kind of stuff. But this is kind of what you'll see if you open a fresh grid set, a fresh grid explorer um, page. Um, today, I'm going to focus, like we said, on the two specific grid sets, Supercore and Boco Chat. And they're in that top row up here. Um, you can see we've got a couple different super core options. It's kind of like a mini suite, mainly just size, but I'll jump into some of those differences. And then Voco chat this purple one at the end here. Um, this is the Supercore 50 homepage. There's different sizes, like I was just mentioning, but this one has approximately 50 targets on its page, and it's laid out with core vocab on the first three quarters of the page, and then it's got these two columns of more fringe vocab and kind of jumping into um, more specific words, those blue columns on the side. Um, there's also some next best word prediction buttons, these purple guys up at the top. Um, and then there's some other interesting features that I'll jump into, but to give you an idea as I'm talking around this a bit. And then this is the VocoChat homepage. And you can see it looks quite a bit different. Um, it's got 12 communication pathway buttons and then the four different kind of navigational or like functional buttons on the sides. It looks a lot simpler at front and there's some really specific reasons for that, but just to kind of juxt juxtapose the two for you up front. So Supercore and VocoChat, um, let's talk about them, right? What's the same? What are we looking at here? They're both developed for simple communication. Um, they both are available in multiple different symbol sets. There's symbol sets of PCS. And then there's also widget symbols available in both as well. There also are, um, and I'll show you how to, you can add these and change symbol sets once we get into the tour a little bit. But there's also um, a community we call Online Grids. And in there, there's also um, high contrast versions of both of these as well, if you've got a user who needs something like that. Um, we've got a lot of different languages that both of these are avail available in as well. And there's um, a, a button you can build to switch between languages with just one hit of a button between the two. Is, um, and there's two that I'll show you. Either can be used with any access method, touch, switches, eye gaze, any kind of you know, thing like that. And both are available both in the Windows and iOS options. So a quick kind of comparison chart, because that always helps me. I'm very visual, <laughs> visual person. Um, so what are some of the differences then? Because we kind of know they're both symbol core, symbol grid sets, that kind of stuff. So first, like I mentioned, Supercore comes in four different sizes, the 30, the 50, um, and then the learning grid sizes. The Supercore 30 and the Supercore 50 both have approximately 2,250 single vocabulary word buttons. And then the Supercore learning grid sets have about 12 or 20 in each page that they have. VocoChat, on the other hand, has 12 communication cells on each page and approximately 1,500 single word vocabulary buttons. And then it's got the navigational buttons and everything we we're talking about. Both also have the ability to save phrases um, and quick chat options and things like that, too. Um, but the main difference is that Supercore grid sets are based in core vocabulary, and then VocoChat grid sets are more pragmatically based. So Supercore works um, has a lot of functions that work towards grammar and literacy goals. There's the smart grammar buttons that we'll look at. Um, and VocoChat focuses more on supported message building. So meaning not necessarily focusing on grammar or literacy, but getting that communication across, getting more robust communication with fewer hits, even if it's not necessarily grammatically correct. Um, I'll pause to say, though, that VocoChat also still does, of course, have the ability to work on grammar and literacy goals, especially with some of the things we can build into it. That's just not its kind of upfront focus. So let's think about Supercore more specifically. Um, so 
why core language? And I'm guessing all of you know this, but just to make sure we're on the same page, um, core words have been heavily researched and continue to be. Um, we'll see on the next slide, but studies have shown that the top 10 core words make up 24% of written text. And then the top 50 words account for about 41% of written text. So if we put that into an AAC device where we're writing text, writing messages, with a relatively small set of core words, we can cover a lot of potential written communication options. So it can be a really functional way um, to set up a communication page for someone where you can get a lot said, a lot of what we might want to say, uh, with fewer with fewer buttons than if we're building whole grid sets of fringe vocab in specific words. We also know that 200 words make up approximately 85% of what we say. Um, and the interesting part about those studies continue to show that that remains consistent across ages, settings, topics, and language levels. And so this is really important as we're thinking about our initial concept of helping people, um, helping people say what they want to say, when they want to say it, and how they want to say it. We know that using alternative communication is kind of inherently slower than using our verbal speech, right? So trying to figure out ways, not just page setup wise, but what words we put on a page for someone is really important. And as few hits as possible, so as few words as possible in a page set while expanding with how much they can say is, is kind of the goal with super core, most core vocabulary sets. Um, all right. This is that uh, pulling out some of the pieces of that study I was mentioning a little bit. So again, the top 10 words account for 24% of written text, the top 50 for about 41% of written text, and then the top 100 account for about 48% of written text. So thinking about our populations, who might Supercore be for? Um, initially, when it was developed, um, which gosh, I should have looked it up, but I think it's like 14 years ago or something now. Um, it was aimed towards children zero in the zero to 12 year old range. However, we've updated it since and you'll see vocab options for both children and teens and adults that you can choose and switch between. Um, it's symbol based, but it allows for communic communication from single word level up to com complex grammatically correct sentences. So kind of at any age, any person um, can really benefit from Supercore, um, including very early AAC learners. That's kind of why we have some of those Supercore learning grid sets that I keep talking about and we'll show you I soon promise. And again, it's compatible with any access method. So, you know, if you've got a touch user, of course, but switches and eye gaze, um, there's ways to set it up. So that's really functional for all access methods. Um, okay, I think I'm going to hop us into the um, tour now because this part is kind of boring. Let's see. We're just looking at the slide, I mean. <laughs> Let me stop sharing. Bye. There we go. Sorry, it was hidden from me. Okay. Let me pop us back into here. I really love these live tours. It's my favorite. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, like, oh, you'll, you'll, you'll never know, like, what happens, right? <laughs> totally, totally um, worth Okay. Waiting. I know. It's always like, hang on a second. Um, nope, that's not what I need to do. Why are you not stopping? There we go. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to share again with just this guy. Okay. So hopefully you can see my Grid Explorer screen yeah. now. Okay, perfect. Look at that, doing it. <laughs> um, so this is the live tour, which is always fun, like Chandra was saying. Um, but this is my Grid Explorer page. So again, kind of where we as clinicians, um, we as caregivers work. Users, of course, are welcome to be in here, but it's not really the idea. So... <clears throat> I'll give you a quick kind of look at just all the different kind of stuff that you can add in here. There's a lot of content that you can add in and build into the two grid sets I'm going to talk, I'm talking about today, Supercore and VocoChat, but then also just for other uses too. Um, but we've got Supercore 50, as I mentioned, so about 50 targets on the page. Hopping back into Grid Explorer to show you Supercore 30. 
which is about 30 targets on the page. And um, I'll point out again that even though there's fewer targets on this page, so there's, you know, it's bigger targets, which is great for some people, there's actually the same amount of vocab. It just might mean a few extra hits to get to certain places. And then we have the super core learning grid sets as well, both in the 12 cell size and the 20 cell size. And these are facilitated um, until you get into the grid set. So meaning us as caregivers or clinicians um, will help someone get into the specific kind of mini grid set that they're looking at. So if I happen to eat and drink, you can see I've got my little 12 things. I've got a little bit of core vocab, and then I've got some of the more fringe vocab here around eating. Um, I'll pause here really quickly to show you because I think it's nice, especially in these kind of a little more limited grid sets, um, you can edit these really easily. So if you're like, okay, I like the idea of an eating grid set and get us started with um, AAC for this person, but we don't want a cookie, fruit, and water on here. We want something that they actually eat. Um, Grid, one of my favorite things about Grid is how easy it is to edit, and it edits the same wherever you are in the system. So there's always, wherever you are, there's always this little drop-down menu in the top corner, the little hamburger menu. If you hit it, you can um, go down to select Edit Grid, and then it pops into what feels a lot like a Word document to me, so it feels relatively intuitive, uh, where I can say, okay, I don't want cookie in here. We don't want to talk about eating that right now. I can select that cell, and you can see I've got this command column now on the side where it tells me what that cell is doing. There's a huge library of commands you can build in. You can have it answer your phone and open Facebook at the same time or whatever. But most of what we need, especially for today, is just this writing command that's already built in. So I can come in and say, okay, I don't want this to say cookie. I'm just going to change it to be a sandwich. So you can see the label on the cell changed. It'll predict some um, options of pictures I can choose from up here. I can also, along this top row, hit find picture. And it'll give me some different symbol options I can choose from. You can see it also will let me do a web search or use my camera to take a picture of the actual sandwich we're talking about. Um, there's a bunch of different options. I can upload picture files and things like that to change my um, the picture on the cell. There's also some tabs across the top where you can choose um, like the style tab, what color the cell is, how the text looks, the size of the text. So if I need that to be, I want it to be purple and brighter and more exciting. Um, and then there's some different layout options too, but that's kind of the basic change a button, let's make this vocab more pertinent for this user. So I've edited that button. I've got sandwich now instead of cookie. I hit finish editing, agree to my changes. And there we go. Now I've got this cell where I can say one sandwich. sandwich. Um, I don't think I shared my sound, so apologies, but it speaks of course when you hit those. Um, let's see. So then I've got also, I'll just show you the 20 cell super course. So you can just see the difference, eat and drink, just a little bit more of that core vocab. And then a few more fringe vocab, as you might imagine on the side. Okay. Um, so for the moment, let's hop back into super core 50, just because that's a nice place to kind of show a lot of things. Um, so again, core language based grid set. Um, and you can see, just to kind of reiterate, it's got the core language built into the first three quarters of the page. And it'll stay pretty static throughout a lot of the grid set. And the idea of that is that motor plan learning, right? Um, we always talk and think about that as, you know, eventually we want the person who's using this to be able to think about what they want to say, not how they want to say it. So not searching for words. They can learn the motor plan of what they want to say. Um, it does, though, even though these buttons stay relatively static throughout, um, the grid set, it does have things like smart grammar built in. So if I choose I from over here in the yellow column, you'll notice it'll change is to am. So maybe I can start thinking about some of those grammar words, things like that. Um, it also has these purple buttons along the top that are our next best word options. Um, they're not officially prediction buttons, but um, so specifically next best word options, just to give someone an idea to help build different sentences and utterances that they want to say. And then the two columns on the end, the blue ones, are the more dynamic, more fringe vocab columns. So you can see they've got different categories based in. Um, I can jump into one and it'll take me into, I put pull the feelings column. Um, it keeps the core vocab 
in the first three quarters of this page, but then it's got a bunch of different feelings here. Those I can edit in the same way I was just showing you. If these aren't enough, if I have more feelings I want to express, which who doesn't, um, there's usually a more button that'll jump me into a, a bigger page of more um, feeling options. And again, you can kind of, you can edit these as needed, but there are some, um, there are some methods to this madness as well with these pages that I'll show you in a few, but you can of course edit them as needed for your user. Um, oh, there's actually, that's a good place to show you too. Um, some of the function buttons along the top, there's always a jump back button, which will take you just back one page and then a jump home button, which will take you back to your home page. And then that turns into the magic wand button when you're in your home page. Um, the color coding of Supercore, you can kind of notice, obviously it's very colorful, mm -hmm. is loosely based on a Fitzgerald keyboard. Um, so it's coding words by class to support sentence building. Again, that motor plan learning. Um, it's not an official Fitzgerald keyboard, so uh, <laughs> but just kind of loosely based on that idea of color coding words. Um, another feature that Supercore has, let me clear this out, um, is the consistency of vocabulary location. So if, for example, and this kind of works um, once someone gets pretty deep into Supercore, it becomes more important. Um, but it's really interesting to me as, as I'm kind of like, honestly, still learning a lot about language development, as I think we probably all are. Um, it's been really interesting for me to learn and watch people use this feature. So exam for example, um, if we find the word firefighter, so I've got some buttons down here that'll take me to different categories. I've got a people button I'm going to hop into. Um, and then I've got a jobs button from people and I can find the word firefighter up here in that middle place. Um, then if I wanna find the word fire truck that might go with that, um, it's in a totally different location, but I can hop into topics and then vehicles. And then I've got fire truck in the same place that firefighter was on that other page. So again, thinking about the consistency of vocabulary locations and how they kind of different vocab pieces relate to each other. And then just because I already wrote out the plan for it, we can also find firehouse in um, places. And then again, using that more button. And then I've got buildings and I've got firehouse in that same spot again. Um, and there's a lot of different um, vocab pieces, the fire truck, firehouse thing is not the only example. It's just an easy kind of one to show. Um, but with the thought of linking words together, learning meetings and kind of bringing them together for people. Let's jump back home. Um, oh, that's actually a great place to talk to you about the find word option, because as I mentioned, Supercore is really big. There's a lot of vocab in here, which is great, even though we try to kind of keep it narrow, but there's a lot of people want to say, right? Um, so there's two places we can you if we can find the find word option. Um, first, which is probably most useful for like us as clinicians, caregivers, and things like that. Again, into our lovely drop-down menu, always present. Select it, and there's this find word option in here. So I can pull it up. I can type in the word. I like. I can't find cat for the life of me. Hit search, and it always takes a little extra second when I'm presenting it, <laughs> of course. But it'll pull up the different pathways you can get to to find the word cat. Um, you can select one of these and then hit show me, and it'll walk you through them. But before I do that, you can also copy these and paste them into a word doc or. Um, a slide deck or an email or something to help make cheat sheets for people. Um, it's great for classrooms. I know as you know, everyone's trying to learn everybody's communication systems and there's so much to know, you can kind of make these quick and easy cheat sheets for people too. So if I hit this top one and show me, it'll then walk me through the pathway to find cats in this way. Pets and cats, and there we go. The other way you can do find word is if I keep cat up in a, here, um, I can hop into my magic wand, which is one of the coolest things of <laughs> super core. Um, so I've got my word posted up here. There's a keyboard I'll show you, but I also then as a user um, have the find word button in here that I can check. So I can hit it and it will take me down that pathway of how to find cat again. And cat. So two options for that, which is nice. 
Um, another thing, oh, I'll jump back to the magic wand in a minute because I want to make sure I don't forget to show you the messages button, um, which is one of the top topic columns options. I happen to messages down here. Um, and I like to highlight this a little bit because obviously it's a little bit different than the rest of how Supercore looks, but it really um, seems to make sense to a lot of people I've worked with, um, specifically the Reds population. For some reason, the categories are across the top here. You can see I just hit them and it jumps me into different categories. There's a lot of blank space in here for editing and adding your own phrases in. Um, but something about the layout here really works for, I've seen it really take to a lot of people. So I like to make sure we know that this is how the saved phrases can look in Supercore. Um, I also like to show people the stories page. So from this homepage, if I hop into school, there's this stories button. And if I hit more, because there's, an, of course, some nice fringe vocab about stories, reading, funny, different, that kind of stuff. But if I happen to more, it gives me some options for some story specific vocabulary pages. So if I happen to Gruffalo, which I'm guessing a lot of us are familiar with, it pulls out a lot of the fringe vocab from the Gruffalo book specifically, while keeping that kind of um, still fringe, but maybe in slightly more core um, reading vocab on the side here. So this is the same as was in that in the dynamic columns um, for reading on the home page, but then with some of that other vocabulary added in. Um, so there's a bunch of these in here. There's more books, more stories you can add from online grids and build into this grid set. You can see there's a lot of space here. And then there's also some blank templates. So if you're like, okay, cool. I can't find the book I want, um, but I really want to make a quick and easy um, activity that someone can participate in. We're going to read this book today. It can hop into one of these templates. You can see it keeps the core vocab in here. And then if I, from this template, again, hop into that drop down menu and that edit grid button. So the same one as before. Um, it gives me all this blank space to add in those quick vocab words, those right cells I can add in um, some topics and some words from the, whatever book I want. That can be a really handy. Um, let's see. Okay, I think let's hop into the magic wand officially now. So when you're in the home page, um, the magic wand is in the top corner. Otherwise, it's the home button. But if you hop in there, um, it'll do a lot of things, hence the name magic wand. <laughs> First, it's got some of the um, apps, accessible apps built into it. As I mentioned, you can build in a lot more. So this is kind of a base, but it gives you some nice choices of if you want some music options. These are just single songs that I built into this grid. You, of course, could fill this up and have someone able to play songs straight from here. Um, you can use YouTube Kids. You can, of course, use the regular adult YouTube if you want to risk that. I'm not going to open this one because it often bumps me out of presenter mode when I do, but um, we can look at accessible apps another time. There's some kind of basic environmental control options, so like a nice TV environmental control. You can add more buttons to this if you want, but just to give someone a nice starting point. Um, there's a camera, an accessible camera that we use the camera on the device. You can edit these buttons so they're bigger or smaller, but this is where your picture would show up. If someone wants to take pictures, some Alexa choices, a calculator. One of my personal favorite things is the supported text message um, app. And I can hop in here and you can see it kind of gives me some choices where you might help someone pick one from the pink column, one from the blue column, one from the yellow col column. Oops, I still have cat in there too, but I can say, okay, I picked four choices. I've got a nice little text I put together. Hit send to, I could choose from my contact list here, which could be built out to have more than just the cool smart box contact and send off my text message to someone, uh, which can be really handy. Um, there's a similar thing for email as well. And you can, of course, use just general texting and email too, if someone's ready for that. The, oh, let me clear this and jump back and choose want. I'm just going to populate a word into our chat box. Um, so I've got wants now in here and hop into my magic wand to show you that they're also 
um, it'll populate some different verb tense options um, if, if what you want is not available on like the homepage. So again, thinking about those grammar goals, there's different word endings you can choose from, some punctuation options, um, a bunch of different choices in here to help think about those literacy and grammar goals as usual. Um, there's also, let's go back. Oh, Samoji. I'll pause and show you guys the emoji first really quickly. This is built into all the grid sets, um, but it's, it's really cute and super core. Uh, it's just kind of like emoji. I'll show you. There's sound too. And I'm not sure if I shared that, <laughs> but they'll favorite. like laugh out loud. <laughs> okay, I love no, the so emoji. Everybody loves Everybody loves the emoji. Um, yes, the idea is, of course, is that as we all know, communication is not just speaking, not just typing words and phrases and things like that. But like, instead of having to type out, I'm just kidding, maybe you hit this guy. Or there's some kind of more serious ones here. Ooh, like I'm feeling stressed out. Um, or a little bit more cheeky ones too. Like I love the little Mike Jeff guy. <laughs> some different choices there um, for some emoji. So for that non-verbal communication and all of our um, uh, specific, all of our grid pad devices that we built um, have communication partner windows on the back and the emoji will show up in full color and motion and everything on the back there. So if you've got a communication partner, they can see this as you're showing them. Um, okay, let's, oops, sorry. I just can't stay out of emoji. Let's see, there we go. Um, okay. There also are, oh, in Supercore, oh my gosh, there's just so much. And let me also show you the different keyboard options because this is usually a great thing for people because of course, you know, the idea is having enough vocab to be able to build all these beautiful utterances and everything. But sometimes there's just things we want to work on as far as spelling or sound literacy. So under the dynamic columns option, there's this spelling button at the bottom here. If it happens that it brings me to a keyboard this is not the only keyboard choice. And that's what I wanted to show you. There's this button over in the bottom here for other keyboard options that you can choose from. There's a bunch of different alphab alphabetical ones that just work on letter sounds. They can work on names, you know, like cat and things like that. Um, prediction, with prediction, without prediction. There's some switch specific keyboard options as well. Um, and then there's some QWERTY keyboard options too with prediction, with sounds, with however you kind of work on them for people. There's also this really fun explore sounds page over here and you can get to this in other ways, but I'll show you just because it's kind of fun where these aren't, it won't speak the word. It will just make a sound of someone eating an apple, if you can hear this, <laughs> or a phone ringing or things like that. And that can be a great place to start buy-in for certain kiddos I've worked with where they're just maybe not attending they're not interested in what you're doing, but this page can really uh, kind of catch their interest, if, as you could probably imagine. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, one other thing I want to show you, probably a few other things, but one of the other things I want to make sure you see is that back in the lovely magic wand button, um, there's also a settings button that's accessible to the user. Uh, you can hide buttons as we need and everything, but it's built in to be accessible to the user. That'll take you to a place where you can have some user controlled um, device controls. So for volume, um, you can talk about your battery, you can talk about needing to charge your device. Um, you can add in buttons for, if you're using eye gaze, there's um, different dwell time speed settings you can change with your access method here. Um, you can change the vocabulary. From here too, like I was mentioning, there's the child and adult versions. Um, and the difference is that the adult maybe has um, more specific like body parts. It has some swearing options built in, um, you know, maybe doesn't have school built in some other things like that, some differences like that. Um, but that can be the idea with this is to start to build independence for people, not just with their communication, like their straight face to face communication, but also with their device. Right. So thinking about a full the full human, what do they need to do? They need to be able to talk about their device. They need to be able to talk to you about their device. They need to be able to turn up their volume so they can yell or we put shout on this button if they really need to get someone's attention or things like that. Okay. I probably need to jump into Voco chat now. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, questions about Supercore though at this moment. 
from anyone? Let's see if it's in the chat now. Okay, slowly make my way out. Um, and let's see, I think I have some slides, but I think for the sake of time, I'll show, I'll do the live tour of Voco chat first, and then we can kind of backslide into the slides, mainly because who knows what will happen if I try to share and stop sharing and share again. <laughs> so let's jump in here. And again, I'm back in this grid explorer page. Um, and now instead of the super core grid sets across the top, I'm going to look at this purple on the Voco chat grid set. As I kind of started to mention before, it's more pragmat pragmatically based communication option. Um, so that means it's based on how we use language and interactions, not necessarily like the specific words. Um, and the language is according to why you want to communicate. So it's not necessarily focused on grammar or literacy or building those grammatically correct phrases like super core. Um, it's focused on getting your message out. Um, I've seen it personally be really successful with some of those kiddos who have trouble getting past like a two or three word utterances um, because it kind of makes it easy to expand past that with fewer hits. Um, and then basically the idea again is quick communication. So there's what it uses what we call message pathways that I'll dive into a sec in a second. Um, that will kind of take you to a next best word page and really facilitate communication at a bigger, more robust level. So let's see here. Okay. So as you can see, the page, the home page for Voco Chat kind of looks a little basic up front, um, but there's actually a lot going in here. I think I mentioned before, there's about 1500 single words in here. And then there's also quick words and saved phrases and things like that. So the homepage layout is kind of this way. So these first two columns, the red and green ones, are those message pathways. Um, the There's three different types of cells in Voco Chat. There's the ones with the cut corner that's filled in. So you can kind of see on these red and green cells, there's a little tabbed corner, but it's filled in. And those will make a jump to a new page, but then also speak and write in the communication window. So if I hit something is wrong, it speaks aloud, it jumps me to the next page, and it puts something is wrong into the communication window as my kind of sentence or communication starter. There's also the not cut out corners. Um, so they'll just, oh, I'm sorry, I meant to show you that in this one. The not cut out corners, which are here, um, where it will just speak. It doesn't make a jump or anything. This is kind of the end of this communication piece here. So if something is wrong, I need help, and it stays on this page. We can, of course, continue communicating and adding to this message. It just doesn't make that jump for you. And then there are tabs that have the cut out without a filled in corner. Um, and those will make a jump, but won't write anything in the communication window. So if I clear out the communication window. I hit quick words, which has that corner that's not filled in, just cut off. It doesn't write anything. It just takes me to my quick words page. So I've got message pathways, these first two columns with the filled in corners, I guess. <laughs> I feel like there's got to be a better way to say that that I haven't figured out yet, but here we are. Um, and each of those will jump you into a next best page, right? We then have the quick communication column, this third column of kind of yellowy orange buttons um, that'll jump you to a next page of quick words, chat, and phrases. And then we have more kind of everyday words in this blue column here. We've got the column then of um, functions, so back, delete, and clear here. And if you're using an iGaze device, there will also be a rest button um, above the back button here. So you can rest or pause the iGaze to look around the page or whatever you need to do. And then, of course, there's the toolkit button in the same spot that that magic wand button is. If you're in a different page, it turns into a home button to take you back to that home page. So let me clear this. Um, let's look at these message pathways a little bit. So. I, I've heard this comment quite a few times that it feels um, 
not great to have something as wrong be kind of front and center on this page, but it was very specifically put there um, to help the user get there quickly if they're using scanning or something like that. That's a really important thing we might need to communicate, right? So we put it up front, um, put it easy to center. You can obviously change that if you want for your user, especially if they're not using scanning, but it's there for a reason, not because we're just feeling negative or something like that. <laughs> Um, but if someone stops here um, or maybe makes the hit or just pauses here or something like that, it's really easy for the communication partner to maybe help assist, get more information from them. Um, jumping in to it, um, you can build complete sentences, but as you go on, they might not be more grammatically correct. So if I hit something is wrong with my body, that gives me a pretty good sentence. But if then I jump into maybe the head button and I... You can kind of see that grammar piece is lost, but I have a pretty good robust communication where my communication partner can figure out that something's going on with my eye in this situation or whatever piece. Um, when you go back home and then select a new pathway, it's worth noting that the chat window will automatically clear, which kind of keeps those um, super long sentences that can happen. I'm sure we've all seen um, from building up. So if I hit, can I tell you something? My other message is gone. It starts fresh to give us a fresh place to go. You can of course clear using the clear button down here just to kind of show you that. Um, okay, so we've got something is wrong. We've got, can I tell you something? Um, if I happen here, there's no verb tenses to mark when something happens. So there's a column to kind of help talking about, talk about time. Um, and you can kind of sit here. It's like, it's gonna happen, it's happening now, that kind of thing. There's some fun things in here. You've got news. I love the jokes pages. You can hop into jokes. And if I can hit what sort of key opens a banana? A monkey. <laughs> you got both the, the joke and the answer, which is kind of fun. Um, and then let's see, in like my news, it's pretty much blank in here. Again, so you can kind of edit that for your person's, your user's news. Um, as a reminder, you can always find that little edit grid button just in the top drop down column here. Edit grid. These buttons are already set up into those writing command buttons. So I can just hop in and say, uh, you know, I pet my dog. I pet a dog this weekend or whatever. <laughs> Change it, find a picture of the dog. Um, and you've got your new button about your news. I won't save that change because that wasn't very good. Um, then we've also got, can I ask you something here? So this has some really basic word questions and some common questions, but then it also has a more button here. And it'll take you to a couple of different options, of course, but it's got an about you page, which I really like to pull out because it can kind of help start people who are learning to have a two-way conversation, not just answering questions, not just talking about themselves, but asking their partners about themselves, asking their friends about themselves, what they did on the weekend, how are they doing, all that kind of thing. Um, so that can really help kind of foster independence in relationships and different communication choices. Back on the homepage, we've got then I want. Um, I'll point out here that this isn't just objects. So not just like I want a ball or bubbles or something There are in here, but there's also um, activities or doing something like cooking or things like that. Um, exa for example, like cooking has a couple highlighted vocab words that will appear in different vocab pages too. Um, so you can kind of start to build those familiarities with different vocab words across different pages and activities. Um, oh, and then I actually want to show you, um, this also has a built-in page for personal care um, to help foster independence for someone, you know, as far as like toileting or, you know, I have a little friend who we built a whole page about his trait care because he has some very specific opinions as one would about his trait care. So we built him a page about self-advocating for that as well. Back on the homepage then, we also have the I feel buttons. Um, it of course has basic emotions, which are not very exciting. You can edit these as you need, but there's also this more button in the I'm not okay page. And I really like to pull this out because there's been a lot of talk as you have all probably been a part of with um, about mental health and AAC. And I mean, the main thing is that we know that we can't talk about mental health without access to the language around mental health. So that's why we built this page in as kind of starting to address that for people and give them access to this kind of language. Um, I know 
again, you, you know, people can hide buttons and pages and things like that. Um, Cause I know some certain parents and caregivers feel that they don't love this page. They don't want to necessarily hear this, but I'm a strong advocate of course, for keeping it um, to give people that, that language access. Um, we pulled this specific vocabulary. Again, you can edit it as needed, but we kind of specifically researched and there's a big study out of the UK um, that focused on adults with learning disabilities and how, what language they use to talk about mental health. Um, so of course this might not be right for everyone, but it can be a pretty solid starting point for a lot of people. Um, then finally we've got the, I think button here. Um, you can give opinions if you want. Um, you got, you know, of course it's okay. It's not okay. That kind of stuff. But then it also has the rating scales built into it. Um, where you can pull out, you know, I, a, a similar friend, the same friend who uses, um, who self-advocates for his trach care, um, loves to rate his new baby sister on the rating scales. Um, he does not care for her. So there's not often good ratings, but it's a pretty creative use of the rating scales, in my opinion. They'll be like, oh, then your baby sister so sweet and cute. And he'll come in to rate it and, you know, not give her great scores, but it's cute and sweet and funny. <laughs> okay. Um, so those are those message pathways. And then again, now we've got this, we're in this column of um, quick communication. So the buttons that won't write automatically to the uh, chat box, but will take you to a page of quick words. You can see this is where we've got yes, no, bathroom, stop, all that kind of good, goody stuff. Um, chat, of course, um, it follows a progression of everyday conversations. So we've got greetings, we've got different questions you can ask someone when you're meeting them. Um, there's kind of some specific columns about fillers, um, ways to keep conversations going. Um, and then the third column kind of specifically has more ways to prevent and fix communication breakdowns. Um, you'll notice this bottom row has that tab um, button, which means it'll take you to another page. So chat help will kind of have some of those communication breakdown pieces in it, things like that. And then finally, my phrases, which as you can imagine, you can edit yourself, but I like to pull this out because this is also where the swearing um, vocab is put for some of our more mature users or not. However, you know, you feel like adding those in. I won't hop in there because it's pre-populated with a bunch of things, but it's fun to kind of explore. And again, I feel like people should have access to that kind of vocabulary if they want it. Um, and then the last column over here are those kind of more everyday words, right? So people, places, and more words. Um, we've got people. You can see, of course, we got me, my, that kind of stuff, but then some places where I can fill in a lot of my own personal words as a user. So my family, um, I put mom in here, I think, to show someone else, but you can start to fill it in with your own personal family, uh, friends, and that, you know, you can kind of start to go beyond just friend, girlfriend, you can put in specific people, put in their pictures, snap their picture with your device, add those in. Um, okay, that's kind of the not so quick, but the overview here. Um, the toolkit's also worth looking at in Voco Chat a bit. Um, they put, they built in a little bit of that mental health language um, here as far as the first column. So talking to myself, calming down and I'm not okay. Um, so you can see if I jump into those, starts to populate, I'm not okay. And then what kind of options I might wanna put in here. This is that same page that we were looking at um, in the other, my phrases button. So if you edit it, it will show you, but you can also say I'm talking to myself or self-soothing, um, kind of giving people that self-talk that a lot of us have that we might not have a voice for with AAC always. Um, the second column is more strategies around communication. So can I give you a clue about what I'm talking about? Ask me a yes or no question if that's something we need to get into. Um, a few different tools like that. And then there's this, can I show you my photos page? Which sounds pretty basic. You can add your own photos in, um, of course, here, and then fill in some buttons about what the photo is, who, where, every, all that kind of good stuff. Um, as we have been working to develop better aphasia tools, which is kind of a, a separate tool from this, probably all this Foco chat's not terrible for people with aphasia. Um, in our research, we've been finding that this kind of page layout as opposed to, or maybe just, you know, kind of parallel to a visual scene is really effective for a lot of people with aphasia. Um, it kind of gives you the picture and then 
words and phrases around the picture talking about what that is and um, what's going on and, and who and everything um, seems to have really nice evidence behind it. So we're kind of building that in, but just to know that that page exists already um, in Foco Chat. Um, and then let's see what else do we have in here? We've got the About Me page. Again, that self-advocacy with my AAC page. The apps kind of start to be built in. You can build in all those same apps based on Supercore and more. There's just a place for it. It, of course, has a keyboard option. The one kind of tricky part with Voco Chat, um, if someone is using a key guard, perhaps, or just depending on how they're using their device, um, this is automatically set up to be a two-step keyboard. And that's just because of the layout. You can choose a different keyboard, of course, if you want. It just will change the grid size and kind of change that consistency, um, which might not be a big deal, but it's worth considering as you're going through options for people. Okay, let's see. Where are we? Um, okay, I think that's a good kind of overview of Voco Chat. Questions about it, I'll hop in and back to my slides in a minute. But while I'm in here, I see the chat kind of blowing up. And sorry, I was not keeping up. Um, but feel free to jump in with questions or anything. I'll kind of scroll through these. Okay. There's so much to these programs. I, yeah. <laughs> I know. And, it, and it's so easy to think about. Like they look, especially Voco Chat, looks so basic up front. I feel like it kind of turns people off. So I really like to show the complexity that it has while kind of keeping the layout relatively simple. Um, it's really important for those certain users that I'm sure you can all think of right, right now. <laughs> Does okay. anyone have any questions for Amanda? Is there anything you want to see that she hasn't shown us or seen? Oh, yeah, that's. I mean, there's, yeah, there's tons, right? <laughs> yeah, there's so much. Um, okay. Feel free to hop in. I think I just have some more of the science a little bit behind Voco Chat in my slides, but well, if you have questions, questions, yeah, just yeah. Um, throw them in the chat. And Amanda, if you want to yep. show us your slides, yep. Okay, perfect. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, okay, we do. We um, can you show <laughs> again oh. how to get to the editing page? Oh yes, thank you. Yes, yes, absolutely. So Chelsea, I think it's like the little hamburger button, right? And then you can go down and it says edit grid, right? Yep, ex exactly. Okay. Little hamburger menu up at the top left corner here. And that's available and then, all the time, right? On yep. All the you can, yep, you can hide it if you need, if someone's got sticky fingers and you don't want them editing their own grids perhaps yet. <laughs> um, you can hide it if needed, but it's it starts out available on all grids all the time. Um, yes. Yeah, so drop down menu, edit grid, and then it hops you into this page, um, on the iOS version. And so I didn't do a screen share, but, um, it's almost the same. It's just on the opposite side because that's what happened <laughs> just to keep us on our toes. But there's always a little drop down menu and it looks the same after that edit grid. And then you can change some buttons and everything around. Chelsea, did that answer your question? <laughs> it did. Thanks. We just, <clears throat> we mostly have Toby devices and oh, we yeah. have one smart box. So I was like, wait, is it the push and hold? I know. I know. <laughs> There's so many awesome choices and it's always like, wait, what am I doing in this one? <laughs> Especially exactly. when you're like in a session Thank with you. someone. Yeah, <laughs> I know it. Um, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll stop talking about this for a second. I'll stop sharing that for a moment and hopefully share my slides let's get back in presenter mode <laughs> and we have a grid pad at the otap library um and oh yeah just the uh samoji shows up on the little um <laughs> communicator uh partner screen yep partner with it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and i just i just loved that that was amazing because you don't have to be you know standing over somebody's shoulder because that's not how people yes. communicate right Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you all, but especially in this job, I'm just constantly thinking, like, I hate having people watch me type. It means I'm going to make every spelling error possible. And then if you're learning a new access method, like eye gaze and someone standing behind you being like, okay, like hit the H and it's a whole complex anxiety inducing, you know, AAC device abandonment issue <laughs> that we could do a whole other presentation on. Um, but yes, I agree. I love the communication window. Um, Okay, 
So why Voco Chat? So kind of backwards now that you've had the tour, but just as kind of, you know, to, to talk about it. Um, Voco Chat is great for those people who might not do well with core language based options for a lot of reasons, right? That super core is awesome, but it might be really overwhelming. Even in the super core 30 grid set, there's a lot. You can hide buttons and everything. And I always, as I know you all probably also believe, give everyone as much vocabulary as possible. Um, you know, as, as much as upfront as possible, but it's still not the right answer for everyone. So that's why we kind of made Voco Chat thinking about functional language um, and having people um, be able to say what they want to say when they want to say it. The other thing is that it's really, it's be meant to be in the way it's built. And hopefully I kind of was able to show that in the tour a little to be really accessible, um, like training wise as well. Um, Supercore again can feel a little overwhelming. Like you saw the path, the different pathways to get to the word cat, even that I showed you. There's so many different choices. It feels like you can get lost in there until you learn the motor plan, um, which honestly I'm still working on because I don't use it daily. <laughs> so, Voco Chat is something you can jump into and it really leads you down those pathways more easily. So, for certain um, users, of course, but also in certain situations, as you know, we have to meet people where they are as a whole, what caregivers they have, how familiar with technology people are, um, all those kinds of considerations. So VocoChat can be a nice option to just get someone into the communication world relatively easily. You can put it in front of them and they'll help them build communication. Um, oh, I, I, I'll i show, uh, if we have time, I can show you again in a second, but just so you know, also you can build a button um, in any grid set. So VocoChat, Supercore, any of them that can jump between grid sets seamlessly. I think I mentioned that with the language thing. So you can have super core English and super core Spanish and have a grid, a change, a button that will just switch between the two. Um, you also can do that with like super core and Voco chat. And I've had some families um, try that with, with kids. And it's been really interesting because it seems to work pretty effectively. They work at super core, maybe at school or when they're doing homework to work on those grammar and literacy skills. But then at home, they might go chat when they're like, I just need to tell mom I'm hungry. I need to go to the bathroom, whatever kind of quick and dirty communication they need. So that can be a really handy tool for the right person too. Um, let's go. There we go. Um, we developed it, of course, like I was saying, a huge focus on functional communication. It wasn't just randomly put together, as I'm sure you noticed, <laughs> but um, inspiration was pulled from the pragmatics profile for people who use AAC and the pragmatics profile to guide um, all the vocab selection of what we put in there. Um, on this next slide, it kind of pulls out um, the pragmatics profile for people who use AAC. How many times can you say that fast? <laughs> um, and you might start to notice where we pull some of like the message pathway from, how we put out some categories that we made. It wasn't just like, oh, we need a people page. It's what people want to talk about, things that we need to do. We need to get attention. We need to direct attention. We need to make requests and reject things. We need, we want to comment. All those things that are important to people are what we really tried to build into Voco chat. Um, and who's it good for? Again, you probably saw and probably had some people pop into your head as you were watching all of that, but anybody who might need larger target sizes, um, anybody who might benefit from that scaffolding um, approach to building messages, people have a lot to say, of course. <laughs> um, people are motivated by communication because it really gives you that kind of immediate direct communication option. Um, I think, again, I've covered most of this in the tour, but to make sure we've got the key features, message pathways, complex access needs, great for squish scanners. I think I kind of touched on that, but um, all of our grid sets are set up for switch scanning options. Um, access, I know, is probably another whole different <laughs> uh, presentation at some point, but just to know that it's all in there, all the audio cues are built in. You can edit them pretty easily if you need. So I've got a person who uses Voco chat with audio scanning um, and it works really well for them. Um, that pragmatic organization piece, all the kind of stuff I talked about. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the focus on independence and self-advocacy is a part I really love about it. Um, okay, so the summary, 
Both vocabs are designed with AC Learn are designed with AC Learner and our communication partner both in mind. Um, we've got super core with the language development, grammar, literacy kind of goals really focusing on. And then VocoChat is that more pragmatic, direct communication, phrase-based communication. Here's some resources, because I know that was a lot in a pretty quick amount of time. Um, the main thing I think to know is that uh, all clinicians and everybody are, are um, able to get free evaluator licenses. We just started a new thing, which I think is really handy. And hopefully you guys do too, um, through our Smartbox Hub website, which I put the link to that here. Um, but if you request an evaluator code, it'll have you do a quick learning pathway in our Smartbox Academy. So you can kind of get an overview, a quick reminders of how to edit, how to make that right cell, how to get into edit mode. Um, there's one for grid three, so the Windows version, and also one for grid for iPad. And then you can have a free evaluator license for whichever device you'd like. Um, the hub, like I said, is pulled out here. It has that evaluator license info, but it's also really handy for going in and typing questions like, um, you know, how do I connect my phone to my device or how to get Facebook on my device or just those questions that you're like, I know I should be able to figure this out. I've done it a hundred times um, in communicator. I just cannot remember the right path in here or whatever. It's a great place for those kinds of quick and dirty questions. Um, it's got information specs on all the devices and things like that. And then we also recently launched our Smartbox Academy, which is where you can get, you can sign in for free and have free CEUs. There's a bunch of different um, learning pathways, everything from alternative access to environmental control specific ones, which I know is huge, mental health specific ones. There's a lot of different resources in there. And then we've got our YouTube channel as well, which has a lot of recorded um, webinars from the past that are free. Um, you can go check them out. They have little quick device blurbs too. So if you just want to show someone what a device might look like for them, how eye gaze might act, you know, how it can look and they can use it. Um, there's some really nice um, videos on there too. And I think, I think that's it. That's my email if you want to contact me. Um, I'm sorry, I was not keeping an eye on the chat very well in that moment. But any other questions? Yeah, yeah. You awesome. don't have any questions in the chat. Good. Um, Perfect. I'll stop sharing for a moment then. I do really but love I that button that like switches between the uh, the different page sets and um, different oh yes yeah. yeah the change grid set but I know I agree it's so um handy yeah because people like you said I think you put in there in the chat I saw that yeah people want more dynamic communication for different times in their lives and different uses so <laughs> it's really handy does anybody have any questions you want to unmute yourself and and ask your questions or is there something you want to see no well, good. Well, hopefully that just means I've talked enough. And <laughs> hey, Amanda. <laughs> yeah. So this is very specific and won't apply to other people probably. <laughs> but uh, you emailed me recently about how to get like a educator slash evaluator license. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And it involves going through the Smart Box Academy, which I did. But the yeah. problem, just so you know, so you can take it to other people, Please, is yeah. it's assuming that you're exploring the device while you're going through the Academy. And oh. I'm going through the academy in order to get access to the app. Oh, okay. Thank you. No, I haven't. I haven't done that pathway yet. So thank you. Okay. Um, did you get your license? I no, oh, I I did the academy and I sent it in, and okay. they said it will take a few days to approve it, and then we'll have yeah. to see what my IT because then of course my IT has to deal with it oh, because gosh. yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, because it's not going to be an automatic, you know because management system in the district. Of course, that's always so frustrating. Um, yes, okay, I'll keep an eye on that, but let me know You know, if, uh, if you have trouble with that. Our, our IT people are usually pretty good at talking to other IT teams. <laughs> cool. All right, well, thank you all for joining. Um, yeah. All right. Yep. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you. Talk to you later. All right. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.